In this video I'm going to show you how to use the AI system in Unreal Engine 4. I'm using 4.13 of the engine and I've just set up a first person project, uh, no starter content, and I've just called it AI Demo. This is what you can see in this window here. Um, so as you can see it's the standard first person template, you can walk around, you've got the tennis ball that you can um, shoot from the, uh, from the gun, um, and that's it. There's nothing more to it than that at the moment. Um, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, look at uh, setting up our level so that we'll have our uh, AI active in one part of the level. So we'll set that up in this this back end of the uh, the template, and then we'll have our character, our first person character, start the level just sort of slightly towards the rear of the uh, of the space like this. Um, the next thing we need to do is add what's called a nav mesh bounds volume, which you'll find under the volume section of the the modes tab here. So drag your nav mesh bounds in here. This is the area that's going to define where the AI can see you and where it can uh, interact with the environment. So we'll just make it big enough so it encompasses the full area that we want, both across the sides and underneath of this uh, box. If you press um, the P key then you'll see that it shades in the areas that it's active in. Um, an easy way to remember that keyboard shortcut I find is it's a P green colour so think of it as the letter P. P for P green. Um, there we are. So we're going to set up our AI so that it just operates within these areas you can see highlighted in green. Press P again and it will hide those but it's kind of useful sometimes to um, to see how that works. Okay once you've done that um, we, we want to add our AI um, characters so for this we're going to use the third person character as our base. Um, now by default it, it's not included in the first person game. What you can do is go to add new, add feature or content pack from the uh, content browser and then choose third person and you'll see this window is very similar to the one where you um, first create the level. So we're going to add that to our project and now you'll see in our content browser we have the third person blueprints along with our first person stuff. Um, if you go into blueprints here we've got our third person character and what we could do is use is modify this so it's got AI um, within it. However, what I'll show you how to do is something slightly more useful is actually creating a child blueprint class of the, uh, the third person character and we'll call this AI underscore master. Spell that right. There we are. AI underscore master. And basically what it's doing is taking all the information that's in the third person character and creating uh, a, a child, a descendant of it. So, it, so it acquires all these features in third person plus you can add your own features to it. Anything you change in the third person character will automatically then be applied to the AI master. It means we can keep this clean for, for other uses, perhaps we wanted to keep it for, for, for a, perhaps a game mode where you're in third person mode and you didn't want all the AI stuff to kind of get in the way of it. So we've created essentially what is a, a copy but it retains all the information. Uh, as well from the original class. The little star there just says we haven't saved it yet so we'll click on save all just so we've got a copy of that there. Um, once we've done that um, we can add our AI master to the level just by dragging him on and I'm going to move him so that he stands and faces the player towards the back of the arena area like so. You'll notice he's still got a camera and all those kind of things that you'd associate with the usual third person character. Now at the moment he's not going to do anything. If we run this, he'll just stand there and look at the player in a slightly, men slightly menacing way. Um, but we're going to change that so that he'll actually uh, interact with us now. So double click on his um, AI Master Blueprint and what you'll find is the standard viewport. Sometimes it does open in the condensed um, uh, blueprint editor and if that happens there's a little uh, sort of hyperlink in the text that lets you open up the full blueprint editor so just be aware of that one. 
Um, once you've got them opened, uh, have a look at the event graph and you'll find the standard begin, overlap and tick. We're not going to use tick or overlap, so we can get rid of those. The next thing we're going to do is add our blueprints. So we're going to drag off here and what we want to do is um, something called the uh, AI move to. Now just be be careful that there's several of them. The one that we want is this one here that's got this sort of slightly sort of creamy brown box next to it. Don't pick the other ones here, just pick this one. And you should see the pins exactly as they show um, on here. The pins have got a few options, so pawn is the AI character we want to move, which will in this case be ourself. So we can type in get reference to self and link that up here. Destination could either be a coordinate that you give it or it could be a target actor. And in this case it's target actor and we're going to use the um, get the player character. Now if it was a multiplayer game you could change the player index to represent a different player in, in the game. But in this case player 0 represents uh, the, the player 1 essentially. Um, it's a zero indexed system, so zero is the first player, one will be the second player, and so on. Acceptance radius, this is the air, This is the kind of area around the um, the AI when it decides whether or not it's managed to, to, to reach you or otherwise. If it reaches you, the, the success pin should fire off. If it doesn't reach you, then the fail pin will be fired off. Um, so those are the settings that we need to concentrate on at the moment. Um, the on success, we're going to get it to print string and we'll just change that to say success Oops. and the fail, we'll get it to say print string again and the word fail. So these are just messages that it will give us when the, um, when the AI is running so we just know how it works. Hit compile just to check it all does as it should um, and we'll play it. Now again what you'll find at the moment is it will do nothing. That's because the um, the AI um, can't actually see you at the moment because you're not inside of the uh, box. So um, what we need to do is just move our player character inside of the nav mesh area like so and with any luck now he'll come running towards us and he'll bump into us and we've got the word success at the end there. If we run out of the box you'll get the little fail message up there because he can no longer see us we've left that nav mesh area. Now at the moment if we go in back into this box he doesn't then start to follow us again and that's because if you look at our blueprint for this um, on the fail pin it just ends at this point it doesn't actually kind of reset the move to uh, feature here so if you want it to on fail if you want it to find us again we could use perhaps a slight delay maybe of say three seconds so that after three seconds you'll start looking for us again. Now you could reduce that delay to, to nothing at all, or you could have a, a longer delay, depends how you want to set this up. So let's just compile and run that again. Now this time he's running towards us, he's managed to reach us, we're going to move out of the way. Now what we've got at the moment is when he, when he succeeds he, uh, he doesn't do anything else yet either, so just bear that in mind. I'm just going to move our first person character just outside of this play area here, outside the nav mesh area. So now he's sat there waiting for us. If we move into the box, he'll come and get us. We're going to move out of the box. He stopped. We're going to move into the box again he comes back after us again. So after three seconds or so he'll, um, he'll try and chase us unless he's successful. Now when he's successful 
currently stops. Now we could have it, so we just relink up to the delay, and so if it's successful or if it fails, it'll come and get us anyway. Or you could make it slightly harder, and you could make it so that when he bumps into you, when he reaches you, it effectively kills you and, and restarts the level. So if you want to restart the level um, when that AI reaches you, first of all, um, you want to get the current level's name. and then open the level of that same name so just link the two up like so to get current level name open level just link the two pins together it'll do this little conversion converts the string into a, a name label just compile and play again and now you'll see that you come after us we can run out of the box he'll stop wait for us we could try and sneak around this side but he should see us again there he is and if he bumps into us this time the level reloads and you can see in the top corner there the success and fail um, options happening so there we are now we could add several more of these to the level to make it slightly more challenging and you'll see they're all stood there waiting for us when we step into here they're all going to come after us after that three second delay. Okay, so at the moment, perhaps they're a little bit quick, so we can go into the AI, AI master and adjust the uh, character movement speed. So there's something in here called max walk speed. 600 is a default, perhaps maybe make, make them sort of 400 instead. That should make it slightly uh, more convenient for us to play anyway. So now when they come after us at least we've got a chance of running away you know we can outrun them slightly even though they still come after us. Um, now you can modify their individual walk speed settings so you could say that this guy here perhaps is uh, this guy here perhaps we want him to run maybe a little slower Let's make him 50, but we could make him a bit more intimidating by kind of scaling his character up a little bit, making him a bit of a giant. There we are, so we've got these guys that run after us, and then this big guy in the back that kind of walks more menacingly towards us. So that's kind of an interesting... Uh, set up to have. Um, the other thing we could do, just to make it a little bit more interesting, is currently they all wait three seconds. Um, what we could do is add a slight random element in here. Um, so if you look for something called the random um, float in range, it's quite useful because it lets us specify a minimum number and a maximum number and it will then give us a random number somewhere in between that. So we could say a minimum maybe a 0 0.5 for half a second maximum let's say maximum three seconds um, so now each time the AIs detect you in this box um, they'll wait a different amount of time which means their animation cycles will be different they'll come after you at different times um, it just makes it f feel like they're a bit more sort of independent in terms of the way that they're operating You can see that their animation is slightly different from each other. A bit more realistic, I think. So, one more thing you might want to think about is rather than individually kind of scaling these one at a time, you might decide that actually you want lots of these tall kind of characters. So rather than going in and, and changing them one at a time, you could create another child blueprint class from this. So we could call this, oops, we should rename that, we could call this, um, say, AI Giant. Like that. And we could set his, uh, this is the, 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 the shrunk down blueprint editor that I mentioned earlier. So we could make his scale um, maybe twice as big all the other characters 
but his um, his maximum walk speed. I think we can access it from here. There we are. His maximum uh, walk speed was set to 50. There we are. So you could again, if you wanted to kind of have that as it is, that's fine. Or you could go into the blueprint editor and kind of change some of the other settings for the giant you see he's got his own different overlap events he's calling the begin play of, of the parent which would be the AI master plus you could also change some of the other you know the meshes and the colors and so on if you wanted to um, but here we've got our AI giant so if we get rid of this character here that we've had but then place in some more of these giants you'll see that these ones will now characters there we are you see these giants all come after me now so that's a slightly better way and you could have you know smaller versions you could have you know different uh, classes of, of character different AIs that come at you um, based on their size and scale and different meshes so I hope that's been useful I'm gonna end the, the tutorial there um, and there'll be more soon